Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of my knitting podcast. I'm pretty sure this is the fourth. Um, I feel like I'm starting to lose track. Um, you might notice today that I'm in another room again. Um, we've had some really crazy weather in England lately. It's been like um, blinding summer next, which I'm kind of getting at the moment. Um, hail and pouring rain and changing every few minutes. So as I have a extra day off this weekend, so book for minor leave, and the sun is out, I decided I'd record. Um, but I am in my, I'm in a new room. <laughs> You're probably gonna think this house is massive. Um, it, it's not, but I'm in the spare room slash my office today. Um, it's been my office since COVID um, because I, I quite like the space I've created in here. I'm start, I kind of wanted to share it. Um, this is my Zoom backdrop, <laughs> as you were, as you will. <laughs> I'm not sure on the phrase there. Um, but I do know that when I'm on my Zoom meetings, at least, the light can come in and out a little bit. Um, I was intrigued to see whether it'd be the same on my phone uh, or whether it'd be different. So, yeah, apologies if I go a bit dark sometimes, but I'll try and make sure that for the important things, you can see me. Because it seems to be when I move, it sort of like rejigs itself a bit, I think. But we'll try. If it's crap, I'll have to, sorry, if it's really bad. I'll have to um, re-record to see. But anyway, you can see that today I'm actually wearing, oh, nearly fell, the jumper that I was showing you last time. So hopefully that's nice and bright for you there. Um, let me take my straps down so you can see. So this is my um, fern and feather and I've made it in um, let low pea. Just two colors. I can show you my shoulders. I'm trying to be careful because I've got a cup of coffee on the floor here. Um, yeah, so I'm immensely proud of this. I had tried colour work on a very small scale on my failed sock before. Um, but I think this is probably my second full sweater. No, it can't be. I'm losing track. Yes, because I made some knitted tees, but not like a proper sweater, um, other than my Felix. I'm counting like ones that were actually kind of successful, because I have made two Felixes and one is pretty dreadful, because um, it's like the first sweater I'd ever made. And I'm considering unravelling it and re-knitting it at some stage. Um, but yeah, so I'm really, really proud of this. It fits perfectly. I had, um, I think I talked about this in the last episode, had intended it for it to be oversized, um, for one reason or another, it fits me perfectly. So I'm not sad about that, but um, it wasn't really what I intended. Having said that, because the weather has been so dreadful over the last few weeks, I've been wearing it all the time. I've been absolutely living in it. We just went um, on holiday. <laughs> I was treating it as a holiday. Um, we went to go visit my partner's parents for the first time in, I don't know, months, maybe since last summer. I'm not really sure. We did get to see them when things got a bit better last year. Um, but yeah, we were supposed to see them for Christmas and um, everything changed a couple of days before Christmas. So we didn't get to go. Um, yeah, so it was really, really lovely. And they live in a really nice part of the country. They live in Suffolk. And I, I did take some photos and things, which I might put in the end. Um, and it's so beautiful down there and lots of lovely food and family and dogs. Um, so it did feel like a holiday and I really, really enjoyed it. And I wore this pretty much the whole time. End of May in Suffolk, you know, oh yeah. On the first day, it was so windy. We went to the sea because I insisted that I wanted to see the sea because I've not seen the sea in like a year. Um, and I, I felt like I was gonna get blown in, to be honest. But anyway, I could sit here and chat about everything we did in Suffolk, but that's not why you've joined me. So, hmm. full disclosure, I've only been up about half an hour, so I'm not eating breakfast. And someone said to me in the comments, actually, oh, it's so refreshing you don't introduce your drink. Uh, I find it so cringe. I do as well, but I'm going to do it because I'm going to be drinking this constantly throughout. Uh, I am just having my morning cup of coffee. And I say this because I have to drink it because I have a full on caffeine addiction. I say full on, I have to have one cup of coffee every morning, otherwise I do not feel good. So it's fine, I've made my peace with the addiction, I really enjoy coffee so I don't mind it. But um, yeah, I have to drink this otherwise I'll feel like I have a hangover in about an hour's time. 
so yes but i really wanted to record before the pouring rain inevitably kicks in so because i've been doing this for the last three weeks i wake up and it's wonderful and sunny and i think oh finally a beautiful day i'm gonna have my breakfast i'm just gonna do a bit of knitting and then i'll go for a walk in the sun and inevitably by 11 o'clock it's pouring with rain and it's dark so i'm not doing that today i'm gonna record before it pours with rain so yes i'm afraid you have to deal with me whilst i have my morning coffee as well so maybe that's why i'm a bit more chatty than last time i don't know mm. but okay that's gonna jiggle it oh bad idea let me put it back on the floor uh, my camera support system is an ironing board a washing up bowl upside down and a really cheap foam tripod <laughs> so it's a bit precarious but anyway i'm gonna start then um so this wasn't a finished object because i finished it last time but i wasn't wearing it last time so i wanted to show it to you and to be honest i wanted to wear this outfit that i've been wearing for days um because i've got some errands to do later and I'm hoping to do a bit of gardening on the roof. That might sound a bit strange to some of you if you don't know about our roof garden. Um, but yeah, so maybe I'll insert some clips of me doing some gardening on the roof later, just so you can see. Um, but yes, so I think in my last episode I shared the saga of the failed um, row house socks that I was making. So I was making some colour work socks for my mum for her birthday. Not until August, so I have I have plenty I had plenty of time, but I I kind of knew that I wouldn't probably wouldn't get it right the first time, because colour work I mean this was the first colour colour work thing I tried I started them before I, I started this, um and the first one I made, I could just about get it on my foot but it was a struggle and I decided that wasn't really good enough for a present, um not good enough for my mother, um you know. Like, I think she's going to be 60. I think it's a bit cruel to give her socks. She's got to struggle to get on. So I left it for a month because I sulked about it. Um, I kind of feel that's my process. If it doesn't work, either I have to start over right away or I have to put it in a box and sulk, do something else for a while and then come back to it, which is what I did with this one. Um, I don't know if I shared these with you last time. But to make myself feel better, I selfishly really quick, quickly knit a pair of socks for myself. Sorry, I think I might be getting a bit of a cold. Um, or it's allergies because I'm allergic to everything. Um, but yeah, so I very quickly selfishly knit myself a pair of socks um, using yarn from Olan. I think I shared the yarn with you last time. I'm not sure I shared the finished socks. So this is a, a merino cashmere blend oh my god they're so cosy and soft but the only thing is i did notice today when i got them out of my suitcase they are i don't know if you, you might not be able to see on the phone camera they are wearing and there is some fuzz coming off and i'm really worried it's the cashmere because if you've paid for a merino cashmere blend you don't really want to wear the cashmere out is that possible is that what's going to happen I don't know but I'm really enjoying them it was a bit of a, a splurgy sock yarn um, but I have almost half of it left so I reckon I could do another pair with like maybe contrast heel toe and cuff with a longer leg um, yeah and have another pair and either I'll keep them or gift them I know my mum won't like this yarn, um, she won't like colours and I don't know that many people that would really like appreciate a pair of handmade socks. I say that because I disagree with the term knitworthiness, I know some people have really talked like that um, Elsie Hemmis was talking about that not so long ago, a friend sent me the um, the uh, Instagram video. I disagree with the idea of knitworthiness, but I, I do, I don't want to make things for people who don't appreciate what it is. Equally, I'm not gonna make something for somebody who doesn't actually want to receive a gift worth that much, um, I don't know, time. Like, 
my non-knitting friends, I don't really expect them to appreciate how much time and effort, perhaps how much the yarn cost that goes into something. Like, they didn't ask for it. They probably don't really care. They like buying fast fashion. Um, yeah, I don't really agree with it, but you know, that's their choice. I can't control my friend's behaviour. Equally, I don't think that they would really like a pair of handmade socks. So I probably know a couple of people, mostly family members, that would like a pair of handmade socks, but I don't think in this yarn. So I might have to have two pairs and that's fine. I don't really mind. Um, you know, it doesn't bother me. So, but the ones I have knit to give away. Ta-da! I mean, as far as you're concerned on the camera, it looks no different to the last one other than it's done. Um, but I did want to share because I said in the last video, um, I didn't like the feel of this yarn. This is the Exmoor um, sock blend by John Arben. So I finished both the socks. Um, this one I finished last night in the car coming home. As you can see, it's not been blocked. The ends have not been woven in. Um, this one has had the ends woven in and has been blocked, which is why it looks nice and neat. Um, and I took it off the sock blocker because I was actually enjoying how floppy it was. I don't know if that's really weird, but it's like perfectly formed and really floppy. And I was really enjoying that. <laughs> the weird things that we enjoy, eh? Um, but I wanted to share with you because after blocking, it's changed. It no longer feels like string. I really felt like when I started working with it and when I knit the entire first sock, it felt like string. After I blocked this one, I don't know, it changed. And now I can see the attraction to it. But the further along I got knitting this one, it also started to feel different. So I don't really know whether it was me <laughs> and whether my sensitivity to it has changed or whether it really has. Or whether the more you handle it, the softer it gets. Um, but it is a super wash. Um, it has got nylon or some kind of plastic in it. But um, if you're in the UK, it's still quite a sustainable yarn choice because all the sheep come from Exmoor um, or thereabouts, which is why it's called Exmoor Sock Yarn. And it's spun um, in a local mill down there. So to be honest, it's not that far from us in the grand scheme of things. I mean, I wouldn't say Exmoor is close to Birmingham, um, but I guess it's a couple of hours drive. So, and I, I bought this from their shop, so it came from them. So it didn't go from John Arbon to another shop somewhere else in London or something. And then to me, I bought it directly from them. Um, so it's just gone from there, you know, their local sheep to their local mill to me. Um, and I think that's quite nice, you know, like it hasn't come from the other side of the world, hasn't even come from Ireland or Wales or Scotland, you know, it has come from England. So, yeah. And I'm really enjoying this pattern. Um, I think I said before, I actually pinned this pattern a long time before I could learn to knit because I fell in love with the little houses. I think this might be the better side where there's no join. Let's see. Um, so I'm definitely going to knit a pair for myself. Um, I do have enough yarn that I could knit entirely the same pair again because um, I bought two skeins, the skeins come in 50 gram skeins, I bought two of this green which is Hemel, one of the yellow which is Drumble which is apparently a local word for bee, I didn't know that, one of the blue which is Mackerel Sky um, and then one of another colour called Bibblebug which is in the same kind of colour family as the purples here. Um, so I might make myself a pair that are purple, like the Bibble Bug for the mane, and then maybe pale blue houses and yellow accents, and then do some stripy socks to use up the rest. I saw that, um, is it Pippin Pin? They have a really nice scalloped stripy sock, um, and they did a thing where if you filled out their survey you could have a free pattern, so I did actually get that one, so that could be quite good for using up scraps. So, yeah, um, I think they're a success. I can get them both on. Um, the second one's a bit tighter, but that might be because it's not blocked yet. Um, but the next thing I want to share, whilst I'm like sharing socks, I have shared these ones with you before, but I wanted to give you a bit of a wear update because 
at least with things like sock yarn I think it's quite important to know how things were so I bought before Christmas so this was before I learnt to knit socks I did something a bit wild I decided for this year I was going to learn to knit socks and I actually thought it might take me a few months so I asked for cause my birthday's early in the year I asked for the 52 weeks of socks book for my birthday from my partner because he never knows what to give me so if I am going to have a present normally we do something instead and we go away but this year it wasn't possible so he usually just asks for me to tell him what I want so I asked for this book um, and then for myself to myself I bought myself some <laughs> sock blockers and three and a bit skeins of amble sock yarn because it was on sale um so the amble sock yarn i shared with you in the first episode so if you wanted to see that you can go back and have a look at that and i've since knit two pairs of socks with it so the first pair which this is the second pair of socks I made um, were these ones. So they're a bit, uh, so you can see that they are a bit worn. Um, they have gone a bit bobbly. Um, where's the heel? But I was a bit upset. I was wearing them the other day and I noticed that I had worn through on the toe. Um, I have to be honest, I don't know whether it's the shape of my foot or it's the yarn or the fact that I made the socks to fit me just right. So there's not very much give. They fit me like a glove. Um, and I really enjoy how they feel on my feet. Um, but maybe they're a tad too small. And maybe that's why, because I did the same thing on both of them. I worn through in the same spot. Um, but I had some yarn left of the same uh, cat bells. So I just mended it with the same yarn. So I mean you can see when I show it to you that there's that little, like, little lump there on my big toe. When I've got them on you can't see that and to be honest no one ever sees that part of my foot anyway. So it probably is a little bit of a waste that I've uh, used a little bit of my mini skein of cat bells on the end. But I really really like that look of like a neutral and then jazzy heel toe and cuff and them all being different i think it's really pretty in a like pretty in a utilitarian kind of way is that how you say it oh. the last few days i've had some real problems with words but you know what i mean um and i think i'm coming to discover that i know this is really fussy looking here this is because it's two separate projects i'd never wear them together um but i quite like that pretty utility look so sort of like pretty details but chunky rough working cardigan and dungarees you know i think that's quite a good combo but yeah so the amble sock yarn uh i think like i would still use it i have worn them quite a lot so it's possible i've just worn them way too much <laughs> I mean sometimes every day for a few days at a time um, because I'm just working from home I don't really do a great deal I will pop to the shop uh, or pop to the post office so I'll do a little bit of a walk I have worn them to work when I go to work and that's an intense day for them I have worn them on a walk a few walks actually so I mean maybe it's just gradual wear and tear I've kind of you know made my piece so that's part of the process of making socks you occasionally have to mend them as well so yeah I do think with my mum's I am probably going to be the one that ends up mending them because I don't see her mending them I think if she wears through them she'll give them back to me and I'll have to mend them and then give them back but that, that's okay but I think that's sock, sock segment over <laughs> I'm sorry that was like a really long segment about socks uh, but but there we go, you know, I loved socks. I loved socks before I could knit them. So, I mean, I've got some quite jazzy shop bought ones on today. I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, I just love socks. Um, but yes, no sock segment is not over because 
Oh, there was a reason why I brought this book over. It wasn't just to say I got it for my birthday. Um, I've been trying to decide what sock pattern to do next. I mean, this book. I'm not going to show you very much of it because I'm sure you've seen inside it before, but there are some truly stunning photos in here. I particularly like this one because I'm fairly sure that this is a William Morris printed piece of fabric. Um, it does look a lot like um, a H&M collaboration that was done a few years ago, which nearly tempted me to buy fast fashion because it was William Morris printed on trousers and dresses and things. But I have a feeling that I'm going to say this wrong. Lena, is that? I get a, a brain block because it looks like the French word for wool, which is len. So my French is shit, but it's something like that. Um, and so in my head, that's what it's called. But I have a feeling that the publishers of this book wouldn't be using H&M clothing. So maybe it's something someone's made in a similar fabric um, because the patterns are very easy to get hold of. Um, I mean, this is actually William Morris as well. It was a secondhand curtain I turned into a jacket and I absolutely love it. It's one of my most worn things. And uh, just so you know, in case anybody asks me, this is a thrifted silk blouse. I'm going to change the collar because I don't like the collar on it. But anyway, socks, sock segment. Maybe sock segment will become a thing, I don't know. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because, um, yeah, you've probably seen this book many times. But I've been trying to decide what to do next. Um, I don't think there's any pattern on that page. Either these ones or, and I think Cat from Heather and Hops made these other ones. Or those ones. So um, I've got nearly a full skein of the blue amber, like a hundred gram skein, just blue. So I wanted to make an all over textured sock. Um, but I have to be honest, as much as I love this book and the patterns are really beautiful and the photos are really beautiful, it's really overwhelming. I haven't been knitting that long two years tops properly like a year and some of the charts go on for pages <laughs> like three pages of charts for a sock you know for a jumper that's bad enough for a sock though um and i'm sure it's not that bad if you take it one step at a time um and you know you don't like try to do it in a week or something um but i guess part of the attraction of making socks for me is that I can do them whilst I'm on a Zoom meeting. Um, I can do them whilst I'm working, if I'm doing work that's just talking, um, and something like this, or the vast majority of this one, you know, once I've done the colour work, I can, and you know, these as well, these were really plain. I did all of that whilst working. Um, and I quite like having something on the needles that I can do during Zoom meetings. I mean, I think I did these sleeves during Zoom meetings, things like that. Stuff that requires really minimal thoughts and my brain's not in it. And I feel like those socks would not be that. I would have to sit there and think. So that would be more of an evening knit. So, though I really want to challenge my sock knitting a bit more. You know, I've done the colour work sock now. Uh, you know, maybe... I To be honest, I feel guilty. I've had this book since January. And I've knit several pairs of socks. And I've not knit, knit any socks from that book. I've done predominantly just plain socks. Um, but doing stripes or collar blocking, apart from those um, row house socks, none of the socks I've done really had a specific pattern. It was just the basic Winwick Mum tutorial that I shared in the first episode, uh, and just changing like stitch, like stitch order or like you know doing rib or something like that. But yeah, so I don't know if it's time for a crazy sock or not. My boyfriend has asked for some socks for his birthday, and he shared a photo with me of some vintage workwear socks that he wants me to recreate um, and they're going to be a little bit of a challenge for me because I've never knit a man's sock before so I don't know how many stitches to cast on um, I don't know how long to knit the foot um, and I've got to work out the colour work on the cuff so I have ordered all the yarn for it 
um, I needed three colours. So, I mean, luckily he knows what they are. They're not going to be a surprise. So I can try them on him as I go. But if anybody has any tips, I have um, two millimeter and 2.5 millimeter needles, I think. I think I'm probably gonna go with 2.5. Um, and he's not, he's quite a skinny guy. Don't think his legs are much, much thicker than mine, to be honest, or his feet. Maybe they're a bit wider, but they're still quite skinny. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any ideas about the sorts of number of stitches you cast on, let me know. Uh, yeah, so. Um, what should I show you next? Some sewing or some more knitting? I am going to share a work in progress with a confession. Brace yourselves. Uh, so, I am about three quarters of the way through this. This is my fisherman woman's sweater. I don't like it. I like the idea of it. I really wanted to knit a cable jumper in this yarn. That's kind of what I imagined when I bought it. Um, I, I don't like it. I showed it to my mum and she said it looked like intestines and that might have been the start of what put me off. Um, I don't agree with her at all, but it really annoyed me that she said that. Um, I did tell her that actually. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just, it does, uh, my partner said it looked like something that my grandmother would wear. Which again isn't like a bad thing, but it's not really the vibe I'm going for. I just, I don't think it looks like the jumper I'm going to wear. I like the pattern. I have struggled with the pattern, but I'm like on the home stretch now. I think I've worked out all the hard parts and I wouldn't have any more problems from here on out. Um, so it's kind of a shame that I've done all the legwork and the stress and whatever. But I have decided that I am probably going to frog the whole thing and knit something else. So that yarn is by um, Winnie Mammoth Fibre Company and I fell in love with it when I saw a poster photo of her version of the um, Nurtured um, sweater by Andrea Mowry and yeah I think I'm just going to do the same. I'm sorry Emma if that's copying. Uh, I mean it's almost not because my weight my yarn is DK and you're supposed to use Aran weight and that is kind of the only reason why I didn't knit this one straight off because I didn't have the right weight yarn but I am using five and a half millimeter needles on this one and I think that's what this one requires so I'm quite happy with the drape of the fabric this has got a different stitch pattern so all I'm going to do is you, with this pattern you start off with the sleeves and you use the sleeves as your swatch so I have a skein I've not started of that yarn. I am just going to start knitting the sleeve. Um, I'm going to do the swatch. I'm going to see if I, I want, when I say do the swatch, I'm going to do maybe like half of the sleeve, have a look at it, try it on. If I like the way it looks and fits, um, then I'm just going to knit it as if it was Aran White. Because it is quite plump DK, I think. Um, I think Emma's yarns are quite plump and on the more generous side of the weights. Maybe I'm wrong, but when I compare it to using things like Exmoor Sock, I'm sure her four ply is chunkier than that four ply. Um, yeah, because that does lead me on to my next project. So yes, in the next episode, you might see that, um, that jump is no more. Unless something radically changes in my thinking in the next couple of weeks, that's probably what's going to happen. And I think I'm going to try and work on it right away rather than just sitting it in a box for a month and thinking about it because otherwise I might not come back to it. And I, I really like this sweater and I think it could be quite wearable even in summer, in the evenings. I think it could be super wearable over high waist things and dresses. Um, I have ordered some green high-waisted linen trousers from Not Perfect Linen so 
about a month ago, but it would take about two months to be made. And it would look lovely with that, I think, providing I get the lengths right. Uh, yeah, so I think that's the right decision to make. I think if you're not loving something, you've kind of got to call yourself out on it and change it. What's the point in pursuing it if you don't really like it? Especially when the yarn was an investment. Like, the yarn wasn't cheap, so I don't really want to waste it on something I'm not, not going to wear. But, um, yes, so I said that was going to lead me on to the next project. I'm trying to decide which one that was. I don't know if this was the right one, but this is what I'm going to show you. So, oh, I was talking about yarn weights. We can come back to that, though. I had a similar process a few months ago. I started knitting a colour craze shawl um by by Tammy Gore using Woolly Mammoth uh, like a, a mini skein set that I bought if you really want to see a picture I might try and insert one but um I might forget to I find inserting the picture is actually quite challenging in the editing process but if you're dying to see there is some pictures on my Instagram um but I got a substantial way through and I decided it looked like a baby blanket like it was really pretty but I'd never wear it as a shawl so I decided it was important to recognise that, that I was never going to wear it as a shawl and rip it out and use the yarn for something else. Because, you know, Woody Mammoth yarn isn't cheap, um, which is fine, because like what you're paying for is locally sourced, naturally dyed. So I, you know, I want to make something with it I'm going to use. Uh, so I, but I really enjoyed the pattern and I thought, well, I am going to come back to it and use that pattern, just not in that yarn or not in those colour combinations anyway, because it did feel nice. Um, and so I bought some new yarn a few weeks ago from Botanica Yarn Fest and I did actually record a clip about that yarn which is a bit yarn acquisition-y um, so if you don't want to see that maybe skip the next 10 minutes or so but it is more about the handling of the yarn and the feel of the yarn than yeah, yeah I bought this so up to you if you want to see that bit you're probably going to see me do an outfit change look a bit different sit in another room with the yarn skip until that bit's over and then you'll see the project i'm about to show you so insert clip here <laughs> this is a reminder for me in a few nights time um so i've probably had a wardrobe change because i'm actually filming this ahead of filming the next episode um so i mean in case you're interested this is my Braddock hat that I mentioned maybe in the first episode, can't remember. Um, I've got it on because I'm having a bit of a house day where I'm not really planning to see anybody. So um, I'm wearing my first hinterland dress I made um, out of linen and it's probably a size too big. The um, following two I made I actually sized down for, but this is the size I thought I needed to make. Um, but I wear it quite a lot around the house. So yeah. So I'm wearing a hat to kind of cover up my scruffy hair. Um, but because it's a small UK based uh, naturally dyed company, I wanted to share because I like sharing small companies. Um, you know, I can understand why you not, might not be interested in buying. Um, I'm watching a clip about, I don't know, buying some mass produced yarn, but I think it's quite nice to share um, small businesses. So, and I wanted to share this with you before I start winding up into balls. So. Um, so at the time of recording this clip, um, last weekend it was Botanica Yarn Fest, which is not something I've heard of before. Um, it's a festival for naturally dyed yarns and I believe it was international because there was some, I think some in South America, America, mm, Europe, yeah it was international and England. Um, and I'd kind of promised myself because I have a lot of yarn that I wasn't going to buy anything. <laughs> um, Yes, but I am weak, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, no, so I had previously decided I wanted to cast on a shawl, basically, and I had decided that I was going to do Birds of a Feather with some yarn that I botanically dyed myself. So I would say in real life it's actually probably darker than that. I've shared this with you before. It's the um, Marbrigo baby lace I dyed with acorns and so I skeined it all up and I was going to buy a um, skein of naturally dyed mohair from somebody 
Um, I was thinking about Mulview. I have since decided that I'm going to try and buy some secondhand thrifted undyed mohair and I'm going to probably wait till the autumn and dye that with acorns as well or if I find another dye plant between now and then that produces a sort of another grey shade then um, I might dye it sooner and then cast it on, I don't know um, but I decided to hold off on that because of the yarn purchase I made um, so I, the good thing about Botanica Yarn Fest was there was lots of people with um, everyone posted a video of their shop talking about their processes and things like that and I've sort of decided that uh, when I buy yarn now I'm going to try and buy things that I can't do myself I don't know how to or there's something a bit special about it because I have for instance um, this uh, yarn which is like a dusky greyish pink which I bought from Woolly Mammoth Fibre Coat which I love it's a Gotland BFL blend so soft um, but in hindsight I probably could have achieved this colour myself if I'd found somewhere to buy a BFL Gotland blend yarn from um, which is not so hard on the internet to be honest and so I'm just trying to like you know I can naturally dye I do want to support small companies but I going forward I'm going to try and make those purchases more meaningful in a way that you know maybe it's a variegated natural yarn that's something that I am struggling with so a very a variegated one would be quite interesting or colours like indigo that I'm not really confident trying yet um, or I feel like it's too much hassle on like a one skein two skein um, sort of basis or if the colour is really unusual and I can't do that myself or if like maybe the base fibre isn't something that I can just buy undyed on eBay or Etsy. So this purchase ended up being a combination of those things. The base fibre is absolutely fabulous and the colours, I mean, oh, I just, I can't get over it. So the other thing about Botanica Yarn Fest, I guess in the past I thought um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company because they were the first naturally dyed um, fibre company. Emma uh, was the first one dyer that I really came across it was naturally dyeing yarn and I have discovered in the last few months that that was like really <laughs> not the case lots of people naturally dye and it's been really exciting through that festival seeing what other makers there are especially based in the UK um, because again where possible I would like to buy uh, closer to home um, I am kind of sad that Brexit means that now it's harder for me to buy from Europe I have discovered since Christmas annoyingly because that's when it happened um, that there are so many wonderful yarns in Europe I would have liked to have tried and mm, it's a bit risky with the extra I don't really understand the custom system to be honest so anyway I ended up sort of caving and buying from um, a small shop in Glasgow called Woolen Flower I believe her name is Jules or Julia and um, her yarns are just gorgeous and even more of a confession, I actually placed my order before watching her <laughs> Instagram video because I saw that she posted like the day before she listed it or a picture on uh, Instagram of her colours she was releasing for the festival and I, I fell in love. Um, and then a friend actually pointed out to me the reason why I fell in love is because it's the colours I'm always drawn to. And in the last 48 hours I've kind of realised she's absolutely right and I'm even kind of wearing them today as well. Um, the clue might be in <laughs> my sleeves and the fact that I was wearing this a few minutes ago as well. So uh, pink, yellow and blue is basically uh, what I'm going to be showing you. <laughs> so it was a massive splurge. Um, I did have some good news this week. Um, so I was also kind of celebrating a little bit. So this is a celebratory treat as well as like yeah but you know I'm not going to justify myself too much there was 10% off which was nice I the, my reason behind not originally making a purchase on Botanica Yarn Fest was because I was like oh 10% you know it's nice but if I'm buying one skein it's not really a big deal I don't want to panic buy something just because there's a special offer running because I really don't like that kind of um, attitude like pressure buying and yes okay maybe I did that a little bit um, but I thought well if I'm gonna buy yarn I may as well go all out and then you know the 10% actually becomes worthwhile so um, I'm not gonna admit to how much this was on here because it is a little bit mm, embarrassing but 
these are the colours together. I would say maybe they're a bit darker in real life. I'm not sure, but it is picking up quite well. But I think the one that I was really blown away with is... Sorry, I'm sitting on a creaky basket. If you hear some like weird sounds, <laughs> it's because I'm sat on like a basket ottoman thing to be at the right height for the camera. Um, but I don't know if you can see like the shades of a sort of like a blush pinky colour and then the rest is sort of grey I mean not so dissimilar to my hat or the um acorn yarn I dyed and I just think the complexity of that colour is absolutely stunning and I completely fell in love so that's kind of what motivated the uh, other three colours as well so the base um is a baby alpaca linen and silk blend and I mean you can probably see it's got like this gorgeous sheen and it's 600 meters for 100 grams so I mean it was kind of pricey but it is a luxurious base it feels fabulous and there's quite like 600 meters in each skein that's quite a lot so um because of like the blush colors in there I thought that they would make a really nice pairing and then because I have a thing about yellow, I obviously have to get the yellow one. <laughs> and then because I thought, oh, that's a really nice combination. But I know what would make that better. Blue. <laughs> so, um, yes. Grey, pink, yellow and blue. And just to completely reinforce uh, my friend's theory. Sorry, I've just knocked the camera. I'm going to pull a pink yellow and blue cushion <laughs> off the bed well the window bed next to me I mean you can't really see it was like peach blue yellow <laughs> a few more pops of pink with yellow and blue <laughs> I've noticed that this color combination I made is even in my curtains actually the blinds I made one of them uh, which you wouldn't have seen the last video because it's in a different direction is massive and pe peachy pink with yellow on it and then the two either side are blue and yellow <laughs> um mm, yeah definitely a thing i've got but i thought being that i'm recording this now and i'm really impatient to wind these up that i might open up some on camera to show you this is becoming quite a long segment on that woolen flower maybe i'll have to cut it down oh my god it feels amazing so i wanted to be able to show you in skein and then open it up so that you could see because I just think it's fabulous. Yeah. Oh, it goes so well with my top. <laughs> Maybe this one should be the main colour and then the pink the secondary. I don't know, I just worry because it's quite dark so it would be too dark for the rest of it. I would also quite like to have quite a bit of this left to make something else with. I don't know if it would be enough to make like a summery tank top or something. So I just think, I think it would look quite good on me. I mean, maybe I need to buy this colour again one day and make more things from it. I don't know. Yeah. So pretty. Shall I open the others up for you? Maybe I will and then I, you know, I'll record that bit and I can shift it to the end um, in case people do want to see them all. Yeah, so whilst I was away, um, right before I went away, I skeined up the yarn into balls so that I could, um, you know, take it with me and be ready to go. And I started knitting my second colour crazed shawl. So I did start it a few times because I think I'm supposed to use 3.75 millimetre needles. But this is um, between a lace weight and a four ply weight, this yarn. Um, and you're supposed to be using four ply weight. And so the needles, it just looked too yappy. So I've gone right down to 2.75 and so the fabric is much, much finer. Um, so it's not as big. <laughs> I mean, it's tiny at the moment. So I, I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe repeat some of the panels. I might even, going forwards, make some of the panels bigger because I think this one should have been twice the width and maybe this one too. So I might start making them double the width um, going forwards. But it is so nice and drapey, this yarn. I've got one ball here, the, the blue. It's all naturally dyed and it feels incredible because it's, I mean, I told you the fibre content a minute ago. I think it's um, a 
like silk and linen and alpaca and things like that. It's just so, so beautiful. It smells a bit cedary because I have cedar wood in my project bag. But yeah, so really, really enjoying it. I had to reteach myself brioche because I'd forgotten from the last time. But this pattern is really good for brioche because it doesn't just say I'm brioche net for five rows, it takes you through it step by step. And I watched a video by um, Stephen West, which was really good. And between that and um, the written instructions in this, I, I cracked it in the morning. Um, so yeah. So I really recommend that pattern because it's a colour craze pattern by Tammy Gore. Uh, yeah, definitely recommend that one. And I have it in this really huge bag I made from my scraps of linen ages ago. But, um, I did embroider and stamp some things on it as well. It's a bit of a weird shape, it is a bit too big to be honest. Um, but with four skeins of yarn and a few other bits and bobs, I had my sock project in here as well whilst I was away. Um, so yes, hopefully by the next time uh, it will be quite a bit bigger for me to share with you. So I think I have one more yarny project to share and then a couple of quick sewing things to share. Um, yeah, so getting to the end of content soon. Maybe I will include some um, gardening bits at the end. Um, I don't know if people really enjoy those kinds of things or whether it's a bit self-indulgent. Um, I know I, I enjoy knitting content because, um, you know, it's nice to see people's creativity, the things that they do, get ideas, be inspired, pick up tips, um, see new patterns or yarn combinations you've not thought of. But I don't know if gardening is just a bit... Or whether like me, you know, you're kind of nosy, you like seeing inside people's homes. And a little bit of seeing inside someone's garden is quite interesting. Um, and maybe just interested by the fact that I garden on the roof. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about that. Like what other things you enjoy seeing. Um, whether just, just knitting and sewing, I don't know. I mean, this makes it look like, these videos make it look like I do more knitting than sewing. Um, historically, I'm much more of a sewer than a knitter. It's just... Knitting is the current obsession, but I'm definitely better at sewing than I am knitting. But anyway, I digress. The last yarny thing I'm going to share with you today. Um, I'm not going to do an acquisitions uh, segment because I don't really like them. I have complicated feelings about them. I don't like the, oh, I spent all this money on yarn kind of vibe that I get. But I think that's my projection. I don't think anybody's doing that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I have a lot of guilt around spending money on yarn when I have yarn already. And it is something I'm trying to rein in a bit. I mean, I say that, but I did buy some thrifted yarn on Instagram a few weeks ago, mostly undyed and natural looking, too, with a, uh, with a vision of dyeing at some point this summer. And I have some to show you that I have dyed. I also bought some sock yarn, partly to make my partner socks for his birthday and partly some self-indulgent sock yarn shopping from Loop London. It was really hard to just order for him. So a few things did slip in, which are probably for me. I'm probably kidding myself if I think I'm going to make socks for other people with it. Um, but yeah, so maybe I will share that to you with you next time and do like a mini acquisition section at the end, but um, I'm not going to do that this time. Um, I will just share for like a, a brief sort of illustration of purposes. I bought a couple of cones of uh, yarn like this. So I think the woman I bought it from was a knitwear designer and used to get these cones direct from the mill. Uh, and so she was selling them on, on Instagram uh, for a good... For a good deal because she was having a clear out to buy some machinery i believe and i bought uh this one and then like a, a gray one and, and then a few other smaller bits but um on here was like 650 grams of four ply yarn and going by the weight and measurements of the yarn it is a four ply because i cut a meter off and i weighed it and then i did the calculations um but when i did a swatch using the woolly mammoth four ply which i'm going to use for my contrast color in this pattern i'm going to do i didn't really feel feel they sat together well i felt like the woolly mammoth one was much heavier 
So I decided I was going to use this one held double with my woolly mammoth for my contrast colour in the yoke. So I wound up uh, the equivalent of this entire cone into 50 gram balls. Obviously you can't dye a ball. So then I, so that's what like 13 because it's 650 grams, had 13 of these balls. I then wound 13 balls into 13 skeins and tied them up. Uh, and moulded them all in alum and I dyed them but before I, I dyed them I did knit up so this swatch so you can see that there's at least two colours on here this swatch is a combination of that cream yarn and the grey um, on this side I don't know how well you're going to see this on here on this side the lighter side it's the cream on this side it's the darker grey and in the middle it's both held double so that's why you can see a bit of light through the ones at the side and less in the middle and then I dipped the swatch I moulded the whole swatch and then I dipped one end into madder and the other end into henna and I really liked the colours I got from the henna and I thought, well, if I got that colour on the swatch, it should be really easy to repeat on the, uh, the grey yarn. It hasn't really gone to plan. I decided that I was going to use um, two of the blues I got in my advent calendar from Woody Mammoth, um, which was a bit of an indulgence last Christmas. Uh, this was um, my refund on my flight to Istanbul that I never got to take um, and I was going to do a jumper using the the darker yellowy colour I don't know how well this is going to work maybe I will have to put a picture in and the blue and the pan I was going to do is um, Beetle Magic by Katie green bean yeah katie green bean and it's like a, a yoke jumper and it has two rows of beetles so i was going to do the beetles in these blue and then the rest of the jumper in that darker just baby poop color <laughs> is it baby poop color i feel like i have seen like baby poop that color maybe that's just yeah a bit gross uh yeah so i Skinned up and I dyed it and I don't know what happened they did not come out the same colour <laughs> this is a lot brighter so it's just brown I mean it's a very different colour to how it started there we go it's like a maybe a khaki brown now I'm definitely like I'm not it's not what I wanted, it wasn't what I was expecting, uh, but I think it's still, the important thing is, I think it will still make a good bug jumper. But because I like to make things really hard for myself, I've decided that I don't want a bug jumper, I want a bug cardigan. <laughs> because this yarn, even though I'm going to hold it double, it's quite lightweight. And I was trying to think about wearability. This is something I'm really trying to like, challenge myself on, which is why I've restarted that other jumper. Wearability of what I'm making. So if I make this fairly lightweight, thin bug jumper, is am I ever going to see it or is it going to get buried under let lopy jumpers and things like that? The reality is there isn't that much time of the year that I'm going to wear a really thin jumper unless it's made from something uh, less woolly so what's the point <laughs> so i want to do a steaked version now the pan only comes as a jumper it doesn't come as a cardigan it does come in all the sizes you could possibly imagine it's a unisex jumper and it comes from baby to adult so i could do a baby's one and steak it as like a practice um I don't know what really worries me is that 
So I know in theory if you're going to do a steep jumper from a cardigan you've got to add a couple more stitches in like a couple of purl and knit so like purl knit purl knit I don't know six times so you have six of those stitches so that you can really clearly cut up the middle and there's tails so you don't lose all your knitting um, but there's two rows of bugs and hopefully I've inserted a photo so you can see the pattern um, and in the middle there's um, one bug in the middle at the top and then in the second row it's two now it'd be easy-ish I guess to get the cut to go in between the two but because of the, the bug there's um, an odd number of stitches in the bug I think so you can't really cut halfway through a stitch like that wouldn't work so you'd have more bug on one side than the other now a little weird so I thought maybe it'd be better if on the top row you had that whole bug missing and then the you know the two either side in the second one um but when you cast on and you start knitting i don't really know how you tell where that point is i don't know if this makes any sense at all but like how do i know where to add in those extra stitches like when you cast on it's fine you just cast on an extra six stitches but how do you decide where you go from doing I don't know, the, the ribbing of the neck or whatever, to the steep stitches. I don't know. And do I do the collar band? Or do I do that at the end, like pick up and, and knit round? I hate picking up stitches, so maybe it'd be better to do the collar band, steep that, and then I only have to pick up the stitches um, down the middle and do the band down the middle, so that's less picking up to do. <laughs> I really don't know. So if anybody who knows of any good resources I can use that helps you work out in your head where to put those steep stitches, do let me know. Um, because I really, I think it'd make a fabulous like cardigan to throw on in the evenings in the summer um, or as an extra sort of, you know, like card. I think cardigan layers in some ways are more wearable for me. I've been wearing a ready to wear cardigan a lot lately because you can just take it on and off with weather changes. So yeah, I think it needs to be a cardigan, but that's like a mammoth complication in my brain because I don't know how to do that. But I do want to show you the pattern. This is the pattern. <laughs> so I've never bought a print knitting, printed knitting pattern before, but I had to buy this one because it's just so beautiful. I love her work. Uh, I did buy her stitch markers as well, which I don't have here, so in front of me. So well, actually, I think I do. Maybe I can show them to you in a second um so pretty and she let me share one of the pages on instagram so i'm sure i can show that here but let me cover up pop pattern and it's full of these really cute illustrations that she's done of bugs <laughs> so yeah it's really cute and then the back has got the same yeah, I just love it. It's so sweet. It's nice to have something tangible to feel. Um, so yeah, I am going to do that with my hand dyed yarn. So yeah, I think that's the end of the knitting and yarny things. I do have a little um couple of sewing things to share with you. One is knitting related actually. In fact, they're they're both knitting related, but it is sewing. Um the I think the thing that I'm most proud of that I've made in the last month or so is my knitting needle case. So I am really fortunate for Christmas, I was given a Chiago knitting needle set by my partner. Again, you know, he asked me what I wanted and he's a big believer in investment in tools. So that's what he gave me. And, um, but I think the cases they come in are really functional, but hideous, I hate them. It's like black, white and red, which as you can tell is not my color combo at all. And so this um, fabric I actually bought when I was on holiday in Japan a couple of years ago and I've been, it was a fat square, so there isn't very much of it. And I've been trying to decide what to do with it. And this is just some leftover from a dress I've made. So yeah, maybe it'd be better if I insert some photos of this rather than show you on here, I don't know. But that's like a pocket here. So from the outside, the shape of it is the same as my Chiago case because I liked the shape of it didn't like the colours of it um, and then 
So what was challenging for me was putting the zip all the way around the edge so it opened up flat, but then had everything inside. Um, I'll go that way. Um, yes, so. It has poppers here so that I can add in a segment later if I want to, um, because I wanted to get it made fairly swiftly. It still took me about three weeks all in order to make it. Um, and I knew that at a later date I might want to add something. So here I could create another insert with poppers in the middle if I wanted to, with more pockets if I need to. I think there would be space for the zip. So you can see there's two rows and there are needles in there, but I guess the error I made was these um, mushroom slots go right down to the same length as these. So the needles actually sit like right down in the pocket. Um, and they're all slightly different widths because the thing I didn't think about was if you stitch channels down in the um, toadstool and then you stitch channels on top, you're going to start interrupting the channels in the toadstool. So these had to be the same width as the mushroom, or double. It's a little bit of a pain, so some of them are a bit weirdly spaced. And then I have a really big pocket here, which I've got some printed knitting patterns in that I've been using. Pencils. Then I've got this tin, which has my really small interchangeable knitting needles for socks in there. So like two millimetre, two centimetre, no, five centimetre long, two millimetre needles and the cables for those and my bamboo ones and then this has um my stitch marker my fancy stitch markers in including i think some of the bugs the bug markers is that kind of focus yeah there was a i think four of those is there any more in there Anyway, you get the picture. There was like four wooden ones and they're really cute. The rest are actually on here. And then I put a tab to attach my other fancy stitch markers. And there's this ribbon here, which is actually accurate in inches. So I did check before I put that on. And two more pockets um, with zips. And in those I have my cables, my knitting needles, a measuring tape. Um, a crochet hook for dropped stitches on my socks, that's why it's so fine. Another little tin which has um, connectors, stoppers and things like that for my inter interchangeable knitting needles. And this really cute little notebook from um, Katie Greenbean as well. And I really like it because it has... Um, Check paper in so you can put your um, colour work patterns in there and some like conversions and it has a little thing for Kitchener stitch as well so yeah so that was really lovely and actually whilst I was away over the weekend it was really really helpful to have it in the car and have everything there and I get such a pleasure from using this over using um, my Chigo knitting needle case which I didn't really like um, it's just so nice to sit there and have that beautiful thing and your beautiful knitting and yeah I don't know it just it brings me pleasure so the last last thing I'm going to share with you today so for those of you that sew uh, you might have noticed or you might know and others may have noticed that in May there's a thing called um, Me Made May and so as um, and knitters actually show off their, their handmade clothes every day. I've participated poorly this year, uh, just because, to be honest, I wear the same things over and over again. And it, But it, I did decide that I was going to raid my sewing project in progress, like this um, silk shirt. And I was going to try and tackle them this May. I mean, May is nearly over. I think this is the last day in May I have not working. And I've done barely any of those things. Um, I feel like I did finish something the other day that I felt quite pleased with, but I can't remember what it was, so it couldn't have been that great. But today I'm going to do a few of those things. 
I've got a pair of leggings I three quarters made and never finished. So I'm going to put a waistband in those and then they're done. And I found, which I have been trying to forget about in the hope that something would happen to it if I forgot about it. Uh, about two, three years ago, I went to Merchant and Mills shop in Rye and I had about 15 minutes in there before we had to leave to go to work. And I bought fabric. I had never been in there before. I bought a reasonable amount of fabric, probably spent £100, um, which is easy to do in there. But, you know, I felt everything. I looked at it and um, I did. I had thought about it before I went. So I kind of had some ideas about what I was going to buy before I went. And I really wanted to make the Metamorphic dress by So Liberated. I didn't really think about colour combos and stuff as much. I mean, I did, but not enough. And I unfortunately cut out half of the dress in this mustard twill. So I then decided I didn't want an all over plain yellow dress and that it was a bit much. So I have uh, a metamorphic dress cut out in this fabric and it's been there for two years and I've not made it. I have a plain yellow skirt, like a pencil skirt that I wear for work so there's no point trying to turn it into a pencil skirt. I've already got one that's practically the same colour. So I decided that this May I was going to try and do something with some of it. With that in mind, I also, when I was making my quilt, which I shared with you last time, I accidentally um, bought a panel where the pattern was printed too big for the portions of the quilt. I mean, I could have cut it up, but the, the fox in the middle is, sorry, the, the wolf in the middle is quite big and I didn't really want to sacrifice that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a project bag using the fox and um, like that middle bit uh, and I'm going to line it with the yellow of my dress and that will use some of it and if there's anything left then I will put it towards my quilt that I'm going to make I mean there will be stuff left maybe I'll make another project bag um, Yes, so, and there definitely will be some bits of this left for me to make something else with. So I'm going to make another bag in the style of... This one. So with a pocket on the back, or the front. A linen bottom, but I'm not going to do two coloured chunks, it'll be like one big piece with linen on the bottom and a zip in the back. And, yes because I love that bag, it's really helpful. I love the pocket in it and I use it a lot. And um, with two jumpers on the go, it's kind of a useful thing to have too. So yeah, that's hopefully my aim for today. And if I do finish it today, I will insert a little video of it finished so you can see. But I think that's all the chatty chatty I'm gonna do today. Um, I probably ought to go eat some breakfast if there is any breakfast to eat, because we need to go shopping and run my errands and maybe I'll take you up on the roof a bit later. <laughs> so I hope you're all keeping well, I hope that wasn't too long. Um, I did want to say thank you for all the comments I've had lately, I've had so many lovely comments. Um, yeah, I know the sound on, was it the second one or even the first one, wasn't that great. No apologies, um, I am learning. I hope the sound on this one's okay because I'm using the same setup as I had last time just in a different space and yes you know I love hearing from you I love talking to you and I will continue to reply to all the comments as much as I can um, I think so far I'm replying to all of them the only thing is YouTube does not notify me when I reply to you <laughs> so if you send me a comment and I reply and then you reply to that I don't get a notification I have to go back and look um, so yes, if you do then reply to me, I don't reply back, that's why I didn't notice that was happening. Um, I did have a bit of a look on the video to see if I'd missed any other replies, but I think I've got them all so far. But yeah, thank you, it's lovely to hear from you too, and thank you for showing your tips. And, you know, hearing what you guys are getting on with and all of that, it's really, really cool. And, you know, hello to everybody that has been messaging. 
and so yes I think that's all for me today I don't know when I'll do my next video maybe when I have something worth sharing again um yeah and so it could be a few weeks maybe less don't know so until then have a I don't know good unspecified period of time and enjoy hopefully we'll have some sun to enjoy some proper sun and some good knitting yeah <laughs> all right bye bye So I probably will end up. I've got a bit of a mammoth winding up session going on later. So, gorgeous, isn't it? it smells good as well. Mm, yeah, it is basically the colour of my face, I think. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that because I had a lip balm on before. But it had a bit of a tint on it. No, we're all good, we're all good. <laughs> but I forgot. It's only a slight tint. Mm. Is it not just quite the same colour as I thought? So good. Was it looking really pretty laid up my lap now actually? I'll show you. This one feels quite complicated as well. Maybe I should tell you what they're all dyed from actually. Um so the yellow is pomegranate, the blue is pomegranate and indigo, and you can actually see there's like some yellowy bits in there, so that's quite interesting. Um, the the grey pinky one is indigo and madder, and then the pinky one is kutch. So I believe because of the different fibre mix, you know, like it's got linen and, um, what was it, baby alpaca and silk, 
I think because you've got that combination of plant and animal fibres, it picks up the colours differently. Which is quite interesting. I'm going to try and stand up for this bit. I can blow it out. Yeah. 400 grams of absolute gorgeousness. Mm. Yes. So I'm going to start my mammoth winding session now. <laughs> 